Whoa, okay, so ETFs have become so, so popular over the last few years because they come with some really nice benefits, such as diversification, low costs, high liquidity, it's easily accessible, and it's super transparent. But if you are the average investor, they can be a bit of a mystery. You aren't exactly sure how they work and why the share price between ETFs is so different. Well, today is the day to find that out. So let's get it. What's up everyone, this is FU Academy, your channel for financial education. And on this channel, I share lifestyle, investing style and educational videos, just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. This is part two of my mini ETF series. Part one explains the concept of ETFs and their pros and cons. Check out the video in the link if you haven't already watched it. An ETF is an exchange traded fund. It makes more sense if we read it backwards. So it's a fund that is traded on a stock exchange. So let's first look at how a fund works. Imagine you get together with two other friends. Everyone invests $10,000. You put all that money in a basket. So you have $30,000 in total. With those $30,000, you buy a selection of stocks. The basket that you have is nothing else than a fund. And to make it fair, everyone gets the same amount of shares in this fund. Because remember, everyone invested the same $10,000. Let's say everyone gets 10 shares. This makes a total of 30 shares. So in the basket, we have $30,000 divided by 30 shares. It means that each share is worth $1,000. Let's assume that the stocks in your fund are now performing really well. Some go up by 5% and others go up by 15%. But on average, the stocks increase by 10%. So the total investment amount of $30,000 has increased to $33,000. Now every share is not worth $1,000 anymore, but 1,100. Now let's assume that one person out of the three of you wants to get out of the fund and she wants her money back. Now you have two options. Option one is that you buy the shares directly of the person who wants to leave. In this case, she would get her $11,000 and walk off. The 10 shares of the person who just left will then be split amongst the two people that are still in the fund. This means that the two remaining people in the fund get five additional shares each. This will increase the total number of shares per person to 15 with a value of $16,500 each. So this was option one. Option two is that you sell the shares of the person that wants to leave the fund for $11,000 and give that money directly to this person. In this second scenario, nothing changes for the two people that are still in the fund. Both still have 10 shares with a value of $11,000 each. So understanding this example will really help you to understand the pricing mechanism of ETFs. Now let's look at the ETF share price. There can be different ETF providers that track the same index like the S&P 500. Now you might ask yourself why they all have different share prices when they track the same thing. To answer this question, we need to look at how the price of an ETF is calculated. To get to the price of one ETF share, you need to take the value of all stocks included in the ETF and divide those by all ETF shares out there. Let's actually look at an example and do that together for the iShares Core MSCI World ETF. If you Google Core MSCI World iShares, it will bring you directly to the iShares website. You can first see the name and the price per ETF share for this ETF. If you scroll down, you can have a look at the historical chart performance. Let's look at the last five years here. And you can see that despite the crash of 2020, your portfolio would have grown over that time. Let's move on to the key facts section. Here, you can see the net asset value of the fund, which currently is $25.5 billion. If you scroll down more, you will find the number of shares outstanding which currently stands at 388 million. If you then divide the $25.5 billion in net asset value by the 388 million shares outstanding, you will get to the current ETF share price of $65.7. Now you might get a feeling why different ETFs that track the same index 
can have a different share price. That's because each ETF has a different fund size, so the amount it invests into companies, and a different number of ETF shares outstanding. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter if an ETF costs $10 or $50 per share. What matters is the price change. So if it goes up by 10% or down by 10%. Now you might think, hold on, ETFs are traded on the stock exchange. And if they are traded on the stock exchange, then their share price should be driven by supply and demand. And that is correct. On the one side, an ETF tracks the price movement of an index. And on the other side, the ETF share price is driven by supply and demand. We are about halfway through. If you're getting value in this video, let me know by hitting that like button. Thank you so much. To understand the relation between the two, we need to look at the creation and redemption logic. Let's say you want to buy an ETF share. So you log onto your trading app and you buy this one share. Your order will then go through the stock exchange to a so-called market maker. This market maker will check if there is a seller out there that can be matched with your buying order. If that's the case, then you will receive the ETF shares that another person wants to sell. This interaction happens on the so-called secondary market. In this secondary market, ETF shares exchange ownership, but no new ETF share is being created in that process. Now it could be the case though, that the demand for a specific ETF is so high that there are more buying orders than selling orders. To avoid a situation where a buying order cannot be executed anymore because the market maker is left without ETF shares, there are authorized participants. I'm gonna call them APs. These APs are in direct contact with the ETF providers and they can create new ETF shares. APs usually work for bigger banks. But what does an AP do now? They receive a buying list from the ETF provider. That's a list of all the stocks that the ETF provider wants. The AP then goes out and buys these stocks. These stocks are then handed over to the ETF provider. And in return, the ETF provider gives the AP newly created ETF shares. The AP then gives those newly created ETF shares to the market maker, so to the stock exchange. And the whole game continues. This process of creating new ETF shares is called creation. Makes sense. Redemption is the opposite of this. This happens when there are too many ETF shares in the market. That's the case when there are more people that want to sell an ETF share than there are people willing to buy the same share. In this case, the AP can buy those ETF shares and give them to the ETF provider. In return, the ETF provider will give the AP the stocks of the companies included in the ETF. The ETF shares will be eliminated in this process. Now the AP can sell these stocks in the market. This whole game of creation and redemption is happening in the primary market, in which ETF shares are being created and destroyed. Okay, we understand that. But how can the ETF share price be driven by supply and demand and still track an index? This happens through the interaction between primary and secondary market. So the price of an ETF gets determined by supply and demand on the secondary market. Now the AP can use arbitrage to make a profit from this. Let's look at an example to illustrate this. Let's say that the demand for a specific ETF is so high that the price of this ETF increased a lot. Now the ETF share is worth more than the stocks of the companies that it holds. If that's the case, then the AP does the following. He buys the cheaper companies that are included in that specific ETF and hands them over to the ETF provider in exchange for newly created ETF shares. The AP will then sell those new ETF shares in the secondary market for a small profit. Now let's take a look at what happened here. So the AP bought the shares of the companies that are included in the ETF. By doing that, the AP increased the demand for those shares. Increased demand for a specific product leads to a higher price. At the same time, a new ETF shares were created, which means that the supply of the ETF shares has increased. If everything else remains the same, increasing the number of shares will reduce the price of the ETF. 
This constant interaction has the effect that the share price of the stocks and the ETF share price are constantly being balanced out. Now this all sounds super complicated and it really is. But this process of creation and redemption makes sure that ETFs can offer so many of the advantages that we love about them. The most important one is it keeps the costs low. And that's because this whole process between AP and ETF provider is tax efficient. The stocks are not bought and sold between the two parties, they are only being exchanged. Stocks of companies against the shares of the ETF. And that saves both parties a lot of capital gain taxes. This exchange between stocks and ETF shares brings another advantage. The ETF provider doesn't have to set aside a huge amount of cash, like active funds for example, because the selection of the stocks that it tries to track are not bought and sold, they are being exchanged. Parking cash can be very expensive because interest rates that you get on this are close to 0%. And that brings down the total returns of active funds. The cost of running a fund are included in the TER, the total expense ratio. This is also why ETF funds have an average TER of around 0.16% and why active funds have an average TER of 0.78%. So there you have it, the pricing of ETFs. The most important takeaways are number one, the price of an ETF is calculated by taking the value of all stocks included in the ETF and dividing it by the numbers of shares. Number two, on the stock exchange, so on the secondary market, buying and selling orders meet. No ETF shares are being created or eliminated. Number three, APs create new or eliminate existing shares in the interaction with the ETF provider. And number four, APs take advantage of the price differences between the stocks that are included in an ETF and the value of the ETF shares. Doing that, the AP balances out the price differences between the two. So I hope that this video could help you to understand how the pricing of ETFs work. This is actually one of my first videos, so if you want to support this channel, then please make sure you subscribe. So thank you very much for doing that and peace.